hi guys welcome back to my channel i'm juliana and today is time to review the month of january so i'm going to talk about the books that i read the books that i'm currently reading today i'm going to do also books that i'm going to start reading very very soon it's like it's almost like they are in my tbr already but they are in the limbo where i'm going almost to start but i haven't yet so there we go and then i'm going to talk about the only series that i started watching during the month of january so let's go if you are a recurrent viewer in my channel you already know what i'm going to say and the books that i'm going to talk about but if you missed it this month we had great great reads few of course because you know that's me but great reads all five stars isn't that fantastic so the first one that i finished and it was a reading that i started last year and i have been with this reading for half a year i can say but who cares and that is memoirs of adrian by marguerite yourcenar so as you may understood by now i have videos for all the books that i'm going to talk about in this section so the books that i read this one has a, a independent book review where i talk to you there about the context of this book a bit about the author and about the plot in itself and this is a long letter of the emperor the roman emperor adrian to his successor marcus aurelius this is fiction for you to know so this is a conceptualization of this author marguerite yourcenar about the <laughs> interior life and the mind of emperor adrian and this book is excellent uh, my opinion is that this book is an odd to writers and writing because of course she had to do uh, extraordinary research about the history of the life of emperor adrian and of course the roman empire and that is something that i want to do as well now <laughs> because of this book but of course she had to do that but i think this book one what one won me by the writing i never have seen or read in this case the pleasure of reading not because of exactly the plot or the information that i was being given or the character development no i mean just the writing for itself this is an exercise that simply shows the talent of Marguerite Yourcenar and I think it's so fantastic, so fabulous the way that she was able to in this hard work that she had to do to immerse herself in the mind of someone else in the past, you know, uh, to think about, to put herself in its shoes and think like him in a way uh, and then write this fantastic so five stars highly recommended of course you have to go to it with a mind that you have to savor it this is not a quick read this is not a fast read because this is a bit dense at least it was my reading experience perhaps for you it will be a breeze who knows but for me it was a bit tense but anyway this is great 
then I started what <laughs> I started sooner so I posted a video about my 2020 my 2024 goals for in terms of reading and in terms of YouTube content and I said that I wanted to do more vlogs and in that video I said that I would want would only start to do that in the end of February beginnings of March but I anticipated myself and I did a, a vlog for two books that are related and I'm talking about Half Lives by Lucy Jane Santos and Madame Curie by Eve Curie. So they are non-fiction, both. This is a peruse about the history of radium. So since the discovery of the substance till its usage in uh, medicine and also commercially. And this is Madame Curie is a biography of her youngest daughter, Eve Curie, about her mother, Marie Curie. So since her childhood till her death. You can, <laughs> if you were a brave person and watched that vlog since the beginning till the end, uh, even though you may have paused it, you may have done it in parts, so you may separate it or divide it uh, in days, whatever. I'm so appreciative if you have watched it, all of it. And <laughs> I wanted to give you so much information because I was in wonder with these two books. I was immersed. It was... A fabulous experience and a fabulous start to the year for me I never had quite immersed myself in a topic uh, till this point with these two books and I don't want to stop here I want to investigate more about the lives of the Curie family and also um, about radium, polonium, and all the other, subs uh, other chemical substances that were discovered. So, a bit of history, science history. So, I'm not going to talk so much about the plots of these two books because the vlog is very extensive on that and I think you can understand the point of these two books with the succinct phrases that I told you previously but you just have to watch it and in the middle I put some uh, some cooking that I was doing if you're interested if you want to you know see some recipes and try for yourself or not who knows you may not like it or not be interested in it but either way I hope you watch my vlog and let me know in that video in the comment section what you thought if you are curious to read these books or if you have already read them let me know everything about it so now i'm going to talk about the books that i'm currently reading so i start reading a book that i'm planning to do a vlog on with other another that I'm going to talk about here and the book that I started with was The Shooting Party by Isabel Coolgate. So this was a um, recommendation, shall we say, from Miranda Mills. You have heard me about talking about Miranda many times. I love her. She's one of my favorite book to words. And I will link her channel down below if you're interested. She talks about very fondly of this book. Uh, it's one of her favorites, if I'm not mistaken. And this, I think this was considered a classic. A modern classic, should we? I think. 
but this was turned in a movie as well that perhaps I will watch, who knows, uh, if I'm in the mood for that or not, because the movie is a bit old, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have quality. So far, I'm in the page 50, right? Where it is? 50, yes, 50, 51. Uh, this isn't really divided in chapters, so it has those separators with the asterisk in the middle, so it's a kind of a continuation of the story, but perhaps with other characters. So it, had, it has pauses where you can stop your reading, so it has breathers, that's what I'm trying to say, but it it isn't divided really in chapters, so, you know, that's a characteristic of this book in particular. As you can see, I have already posted some, some quotes, and so far I'm, I'm quite enjoying it, yeah. This story is intriguing me, because although we are this season long, as you can see, but... Um, I think we are still warming up, so the story, I think, will unfold very much more than what is being um, shown till now. So, I'm not going to talk about the plot, no, because I'm going to leave that for the vlog. So, there you go. Then, I started, as I promised, because I talked about this before, I started Intellectuals and Society by Thomas Sowell. So, this is my uh, December book for the challenge, 12 books for 2024. And as you can see, this is a chunk of a book. And I have already started because my plan was to read roughly 40 to 50 pages each month till December <laughs> so I can savor the reading and of course being able to the reading being doable basically because if I waited for later in the year and start reading later in the year perhaps I wouldn't finish in December as per usual with me. So, right now I achieved my um, goal of January. So I read 50 pages. Now I'm on page what? I stopped on page 56. So I'm on track. Hopefully this will continue during, during the year. And then in December, you will have a review video just for this book. And right now, I'm finding it quite interesting. Thomas Howell has perspectives that are pertinent and that make you think. I think that what's most, most important, this is non-fiction for you to know, uh, and it's the title says everything, so the point or the goal or the synopsis is in the title. Oh, and I made a purchase. <sighs> I couldn't stop myself because I wanted so much to read uh, Conflict of Visions by Thomas Sowell. And I was after that book for so many, so many months already. And I thought, oh, it's too expensive, maybe not right now. And I waited and then it sold out everywhere, you know. And then I had to go to Amazon Marketplace and then I found there a book sold by a retailer um, that was marketed as new. That's what I wanted. So when I saw that a retailer was selling a, a new book, I, I couldn't help myself and I bought it. So 
I think that that will come up, that will arrive in March. So it will be a few weeks. It will take a, long, a bit longer, but that's okay. I'm not in a hurry. I will not read that book this year anyway. So, but I plan to read it next year. But am I, I very excited? I bought it in English because um, this is an American author. And I wanted to read the book uh, with the terms that he uses in English. And so that it wouldn't... You know the term lost in translation? So I didn't want that to happen. So I thought to, to buy it in English. And that's what I did. So there you go. I'm rambling. I'm sorry. This is the books that I'm currently reading. So, oh, okay. This is not the only books that I'm currently reading. But I'm not going to talk about the other ones because you know which they are. They are in my currently reading on Goodreads and they are being dragged since last year or even earlier than that. Don't tell anyone. So I'm not going to mention them, but just for you to know, they are being read. So now I'm going to talk about the books that I'm quite sure I will start this week. And one of them is Sibyl by Benjamin Disraeli. So this was kind of a present, kind of a borrow from my dad. He's very interested or he found himself being interested in Benjamin Disraeli. So he was a politician. So for you to have an idea, we are talking about the 1800s. And he, he was also Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. And I'm thinking that this book, for what my dad talked about, it's somewhat a fictionalized a drama about the lives of the common people in England during that time. So this book is in English and my dad wanted me to read it so I could discuss it, discuss it with him. I'm quite excited to do that and I never have heard about this figure, this historical figure, so you know, that's my fault, Is I'm ignorant in many aspects. Uh, so my family, my friends, they are all sources of new knowledge all the time. And this is one of those cases. So there you go. And then the other one, I have talked about this book to you in my review video of Memoirs of Adrian by Margarit Yourcenar and I told you there that I was interested in a book that I discovered recently and that is With Open Eyes Conversations with Matthew Galley by Margarit Yourcenar so this is a Portuguese edition this is second hand this is a very old edition but this is from, let me see, 1980. So the French, the title in French is Le Zio Auvert, but this is a translation. So I acquired it because I was very interested in it after reading Memoirs of Adrian, uh, because the... Um, the homework that Marguerite Yourcenar had to do to write memoirs of Adrian intrigued me. And this is a collection of interviews that she did with Matthew Gallet. So, collect, so a collection of interviews that are present in this novel, in this book, I mean. Uh, and I'm quite interested in savoring this reading. I'm not in a hurry, so I'm not going to read this 
so fast because in the meantime I have other readings to do so I may perhaps not have quite the time to pick this one up very often but anyway I'm my um, idea is to then do a video where I will talk about some aspects of these interviews and uh, put together in a playlist with memoirs of Adrian to be more easy for you to watch these videos. So that's my idea. And now to end it all, <laughs> uh, I thought this video was, go was going to be a breeze to do and now it's taking too long. I'm so sorry, but it's almost there. So the series that I started watching, I haven't finished it yet. I stopped in episode 4, so I'm still at the beginning. Although it doesn't have so many episodes, I don't know how much they are, but or how many they are, but um, I think they are 8 to 12, something like that. And it, this is The Gilded Age, season 2. So you may know some actresses, for me the most known actress to, a, actresses that are in this series are Christine Baranski, Cynthia Nixon, so they are two that are well known and in this series they are sisters. And the, we are talking about the 1800s in New York when the railroads were in construction and more and more uh, uh, entrepreneurships were coming to the game. We are talking about families of old money and new money and well, the people and the families with new money trying to enter in old money society so the intrigues, the plots, the um, gossip, <laughs> it's everything there. And a curiosity for you is that The Gilded Age is from the same creator of Downton Abbey, Julian Fellower. Fellowers. So there you go. Uh, I love period series and movies. And I love the times of the 19th century, that's a period in time, in time that quite intrigues me and I'm quite interested in. Uh, I found, oh, you know, the dresses and I know that it's... It, <laughs> you may say, oh, you are futile. Well, yes, I'm many things and some of them including being futile sometimes, so, yeah. But, and, you know, the language and the, this disparity in social, le in the social ladder that it's still prevailing uh, in this moment in the world, of course, I'm not saying the contrary, but at that time it was even worse. And in the episode that I stopped in, we are talking about, or the main, one of the main plots that are happening is that the uh, workers of the railroads are uh, in strike. So they want lesser work hours, they want better work conditions. So this is uh, the beginning of the um, fight of the people to the to their employers so that's a point in time that also very quite interests me and we are seeing that in this series so i find that very interesting uh, and i think they will continue to do that along the series continues so, as I said, I stopped in episode 4, so, I, so I'm still at the beginning. I have 
already talk about the Gilded Age in another wrap up that now I'm not sure which one it was but I think it was perhaps June or July of 2023 when I saw the first season and I loved it so when the second season came out in October last year October November now I don't know I I wanted to watch it right away but then I waited and January came up and I had the time to watch some episodes so I highly advise you if you are also curious about this period in time if you like period series and movies I think you will love it and the portrayals of the actors are wonderful my favorite character is how is she called? Is Bertha Russell, so the character that is being portrayed by Carrie Coon. So Bertha Russell is new money. She is the wife of an entrepreneur in railroads and she wants to get into the society and the inner circle of the old money. And she, do, she does everything that she can. She talks with everyone that she can to influence, to, to achieve influence over people that lead, uh, that are leaders in the community of New York, uh, in, you know, the rich neighborhoods. So I love her. I think it's one of the main characters that are more um, impactful. So there we go. I'm going to stop here because this video is huge again. So please go read the books that I recommended to you or go read the synopsis to see if that's something that you want to read. Or you are interested in as well go pick through the gilded age i highly advise you it's very entertaining many things are happening at the same time and it's a period in history that's very interesting so please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already don't forget to press the ring, ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram and on all socials that I'm going to link down below in the box description. And I will see you on the next one.